Welcome to the Plenteous Redemption Podcast, where the cross and the culture are on a collision course for discussion. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require signs, the Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified. Under the Jews a stumbling block, under the Greeks foolishness, but under them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Now, here's your host, Thomas Irvin. Americans once enjoyed great individual freedom from both the government and a social perspective. Neither has been perfect, but perfect is in the eye of the beholder. The government did well throughout much of American history to leave its citizens alone, which was a blessing. Likewise, the social constraints to which Americans have been subject over time have lacked any form of totalitarian control for the most part. That fact has changed drastically in recent years, but until the era of COVID, we have enjoyed much leeway in our ability to function socially in America. The recent shift in social trends began roughly in the 1990s. During this period, the freedoms we experienced were detached from any sense of personal responsibility. Morality was heavily redefined to suit humanistic postmodern worldviews. Perverse lifestyles became the norm. Any form of conservative morality came to be identified with bigotry. Media, television, movies, radio, and the internet evolved into echo chambers for perversion. Public schools, which were established to enforce propaganda, teach children to live the most deviant lifestyles. Every new idea is considered revolutionary, not in the sense of brilliance, but rather in line with Marxist stratagem and intent. The victims of these revolutionary ideas are given ultimatums. Join the mob and echo their ideas or be met with unrighteous indignation. Taboo has become mainstream in the new morality. These facts are highly problematic as significant portions of our daily working knowledge are supplied by our immediate society and thereby socially constructed. Knowledge of this sort is necessary for us to engage in decision-making processes. Men are often inadequately prepared to make important life decisions, but removing dependence upon God greatly compounds this reality. The world functions effectively as a live and dynamic feedback device. Such devices help create reasonable boundaries in which we can live and function together. Unfortunately, the current reconstruction of society in America serves to tear down the predictable boundaries accustomed. As such, society becomes dysfunctional. Order, safety, security are all lost. We are no longer capable of making fundamental practical decisions as the world plunges further into confusion. The most basic aspect of life become unnecessarily complicated. These new experiences and realizations can be overwhelming for sane people <laughs> to try and entertain. Proper guidance from rational people is becoming far and few. Therefore, obtaining sound individual knowledge has never been more critical. Failure to take up this individual responsibility places everyone within respective spheres of influence at risk. Christian children naively sent out from home will soon be hit with a barrage of corrupt ideas that beat them into intellectual submission. The world around us provides a measure of feedback regarding our ideas and choices, which are further complicated by the newly established and perverse incentive structures. These young people will be forced to abandon their Christian presuppositions in exchange for the depravities of this present evil world. 
Parents are making flawed assumptions regarding the ability of their children to handle this onslaught based on past experiences and dead traditions. Knowledge is power, but even more powerful is the group that controls the flow of knowledge. Psalm 12.8 says, The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. Deconstructive revolutionary attitudes have infected every institution. Media, arts, all levels of education, and even our churches have adopted perverted and ungodly ideas. These ideas become the foundation for new forms of knowledge. Once this new form of knowledge is mainstream, which happens quickly on the internet, dissenters immediately become social outcasts. They will bite and devour their own if there is the slightest refusal to move the moral compass further into disorder. The mechanisms used for banishment began with political correctness and have evolved into cancel culture. Our society, including Christians, to their shame, faithfully watched Ellen and Oprah as they prophesied the new morality. They won the hearts of the people, breaking them down little by little. They labored to replace traditional ideas of integrity and conservative morality with new ideas inspired by Jezebel. Nevertheless, as the prophetesses that led the way, they are left behind by the generation of progressives that followed them. While the former use television talk shows to acclimate America to their ideas, the latter are militant and have no concern for acclimation. New orthodoxies are forced upon society by way of religious intimidation. The internet has become a beloved tool used to beat people into submission. They will riot in the streets if that fails. Most striking about these new taboo-free orthodoxies that control the flow of knowledge, they are not certain knowledge actually exists. They demand we all know what they proclaim, and yet they will forcefully posit that man cannot know anything at all. In their thinking, knowledge is socially constructed and can be made in any man's image, so long as that man is not actually male, white, conservative, <laughs> or Christian. As long as they are in control of the construction of knowledge, their indignation is temporarily satiated. Unfortunately for them, society is subject to reality's consequences, even if clumsily so. These social engineers are beside themselves each time reality rears its head and burns their constructs down. However, this is not cause for reflection. Instead, they take their ideas and forcefully double down. Reality's implicit validation process fails them every step of the way, but they are convinced that reality can be canceled. In an effort to be intellectually honest, let us admit that ideas are, to some extent, socially constructed. However, this notes the importance of a validation process to help steer those constructs closer to reality. Much better than that process would be reliance upon the perfect word of God. Speaking in general terms of society's admixture of people, when the majority try and operate within the natural limits of sanity, they allow reality to try their ideas and then adjust accordingly preferably with adjustments in the direction of the overall common good for themselves and the larger society. In this way, we move forward with tested, objectively established ideas. Societies that take on this mode of operation refrain from reaching into the depravity of their imaginations to force their construction of reality on others. Living life in this manner will force reality to put depraved ideas in their place, because the way of the transgressor is hard. Like scripture, reality is of no private interpretation, but social engineers try to change that fact. God said in Jeremiah 2.19, Thine own wickedness shall correct thee, and thy backsliding shall reprove thee. Know therefore and see that it is an evil thing and bitter that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God, and that my fear is not in thee, saith the Lord God of hosts. Thus, any attempt to move forward in life based upon wicked and ungodly knowledge will inspire reality's correction and reproof. This is a natural process ingrained within the structure of the world. 
Everyone can pretend repercussions do not exist for applying ungodly ideas, but reality's consequences will enter with full force. Attempting to construct a world suitable for individual imaginations should be rejected, even when the imaginations are of a small collective group. It is true that for now, we see through a glass darkly, but we should do all we can to hold fast the reality we dimly see. For society to function, it must be led by reality's validations or, better yet, the perfect word of God. Our ideas must be tested against the word of God and then clarified by its implementation in the real world. And only then will the looking glass become less dark. We should never assume our predilections are correct, not until they have been thoughtfully challenged for validation. Having proven their usefulness in this world and their value for the world to come, we may then proceed with confidence. Knowledge does not exist simply for possessing. It is not some sort of keepsake we cling to with no practical value for everyday life. Knowledge is an incredibly useful tool meant to guide us through the world in which we live. Depending upon measurable knowledge, in sync with reality, helps our lives to be soundly established. We are in no way insulated from feedback. We will be subject to immediate and long-term consequences. We must be willing to respond to the spiritual and temporal feedback to remain on the straight and narrow. In essence, we learn to be narrow-minded, in tune with God's word and reality's destructive consequences. These may seem apparent and plain ideas, (laughs) but somehow they are popularly rejected. Man wants to live as though God is not mocked, as though there will be no reaping of what he has sown. Knowledge is no longer the result of tested and tried theories, but rather the manifestation of social engineers. They speak them into existence to play God. They are then mandated and imposed on all members of society despite looming consequences. One example of this is the newfound use of personal pronouns. Who knew people could be so creative regarding the most non-debatable and straightforward aspects of life? As of October 2021, there exists in some official capacity 75 pronouns. Our morally superior social engineers have concluded that gender is no longer attached to pronouns, or so they think. A quick review of each pronoun will reveal they are nothing more than awkward expressions of male and female. The result is a person of one gender denying their biological reality in favor of the only other gender available to them. This proves they believe there are only two genders and that their creative and perverted use of pronouns is nothing more than rebellion against reality. They cling to these ideas despite the mass confusion and increased suicide rates that have accompanied them. Decisions based on knowledge are always subject to systemic reality-based consequences, not because the system is rigged against some person or group, but rather God rigged the system against ungodliness. Sin has consequences. Ignoring those consequences will not cause them to go away. Should one come from a culture that tends to live outside society's legal limits, the legal system is not systemically racist, but instead It is against the illegal activity embedded within certain cultures. If the members of such a culture were willing to remove their participation in criminal activity, they would no longer find themselves in conflict with the criminal justice apparatus. The competitive fabric of reality will break down bad ideas and the decisions they produce. Men who choose to do well shall be accepted, but if not, Sin lieth at the door, and not only so, but so does the sheriff. (laughs) Social engineers serve to eradicate the link between knowledge and reality. If only they could recreate man in such a way to remove consequences from actions. Nevertheless, the harder they try, the sharper and harsher the connection reveals itself. For them, knowledge and reality must be reshaped to suit their ideological-based narratives. Terminology must be redefined, achievement is seen as privilege, and failure is due to systemic disadvantage. 
the merit of their ideas are not open for discussion. They simply declared them so, and if these ideas fell, it just proves they were right. Our lives have always existed under tremendous social pressure to conform, and in many ways, that was an overall good. In today's definition of good, this idea is scary. In societies based on reasonable measures of sanity, this idea produces peace and stability. When the society applying the pressure is insane, violence, confusion, and depravity will be propagated. To make matters worse, the social engineers that guided us here will always be hedged from the overall consequences. The people they force to live according to their ideas will bear the repercussions. These people have recruited the decision-making power of elected officials, who then appoint them to non-elected positions of power. Thus, activists are given the power of the United States government to effectuate their corrupt ideas. As this junior form of Gestapo grows in number and ability, censorship will increase in popularity. Until recent years, this battle for social control has not been decisive. However, there was always the potential to become decisive. With generations of young people effectively indoctrinated and with Christianity's weak and impotent status, balance is gone and the inmates are running the prison. The United States government was created to govern objectively. As a country, we were delivered a well-defined declaration of our independence and a well-defined constitutional republic. All that was left was for the government to govern in accord with those written documents. Instead, our moral superiors forced their version of their warped morality into constitutional law. Political methods have merged with social control, creating a totalitarian thrust into dominance. Cancel culture, critical race theory, Black Lives Matter, and intersectionality are the recapitulation of Marx, Lenin, and Mao. That is, the collectivists are collecting, and there is little left to stand in their way. It is difficult to come to grips with the idea that people still desire the propagation of collectivist ideas. It seems collectivist death camps will again be the wave of the future. Social trends play a significant role in the knowledge available to the world. These trends dominate the access to necessary knowledge through algorithms on social media sites. When we consider again, decisions are made based upon the knowledge available the incentives involved, and the constraints placed upon men, then we can now see how controlling the flow of knowledge is so destructive. When this control exists under the dark cloud of totalitarian manipulation, the results will be catastrophic. When decisions are forced in certain directions and then superficially insulated from consequences, (laughs) the troubles that will ensue are great, possibly damaging for generations to come. In order to defy the forces of these social trends, Christians must stop participating in the confusion. Someone must nail the 95 Theses to the ungodly religious orthodoxy's door. There are fewer shameful examples of confusion than to see Christians apologize for their white privilege or express solidarity with BLM. Such levels of ignorance should not be allowed to exist. This trend will only be broken when Christians again find it prudent to seek God's approval through the study of his word. Seeking the approval of our twisted moral superiors will lead us into depraved territory. Attention to detail, a grip on certitude, and a passion for exactness will inevitably separate the Christian from this present evil world. We must resolve to be real, to operate in reality and to live by the guidance of the Word of God. Christian, trust God and be willing to receive the consequences in this world for doing so. Our consolation will be in the world to come, but no glory will be available to us from this world, not without severe levels of ungodly compromise. Our beliefs are not theory. They are grounded in absolute truth. We should fear error not the temper tantrums of confused pagans. Convictions can be right or wrong. We must labor intellectually in God's word to verify that our propositions are biblically accurate. 
Truth provides a great measure of confidence and rest for the mind, but confusion plunges into emotional turmoil. This exact turmoil is abundantly manifest in our present evil world. Brethren, come out from among them. Thank you for listening, and God bless. We hope you enjoyed this podcast. You can learn more about our ministry by visiting www.plenteousredemption.com. You can hear more Plenteous Redemption podcast audio at www.plenteousredemption.media. Please comment below if this podcast has been a help to you. Also, inform us of future topics that would interest you. Thank you again for listening to the Plenteous Redemption podcast.